Give me just a second here. All right. So thanks again for being here. This is the Kennedy Oliver Juice Plus Men's Zoom. And as you can see, this is not just for men. We invite everybody to this call. The idea behind this is that uh, Juice Plus business is 90% women. While that number is actually going down, there's more and more men getting into the business, which is great. Uh, but really want to give a men's perspective on the Juice Plus company and the, the fact that this is a real business. Uh, so this is for guys who are distributors, it's for potential distributors, uh, it's also for men or significant others who are supporting their spouse or significant other in this business. Uh, and of course, like I said, women can listen too. Um, maybe some of you women out there have a, a guy on your side there that's not really on your side or doesn't think this is the real deal. And we're here to kind of debunk that myth and hopefully um, change people's opinion about that. You know, I, I, t I met David Gompers about a year ago at one of the conferences and he told me this story about how before Juice Plus it was NSA and it was 90% men and how that's all changed. So I thought that was a cool story. But without further ado, I'd love to introduce Josh Duhon. Um, Josh was born into a family of MLMers. He has over, his family has over 30 years of experience in the direct sales industry. He happens to be the nephew of Cheryl Cortese. Um, most of you, I'm sure, know who Cheryl is. Josh splits his time between Texas and California. He does have a job in Texas as well. Uh, he's an entrepreneur at heart, but believes in multiple streams of income and profits over wages. That's quite a statement. I love that statement, profits over wages. Uh, Josh handles marketing and recruitment for TexasPistol.com. I actually checked out the site. It looks like a very cool business, Josh. Congratulations on that. Uh, while managing a growing business with a Juice Plus company, he also personally seen the power of the industry in terms of its ability to create a massive income. So Josh sees the future of the direct sales industry as a growth industry with tremendous long-term potential. Josh, thanks for being here. It's all you. Craig, uh, thanks for being here, man. And if you guys, I'm sorry, if you guys could all mute yourself to get rid of any background noise, that'll also keep the picture on Josh while he's speaking because we are recording this. So, all right, Josh, go ahead. Craig, thanks for having me, man. Anchor Bears, you got to go lay down, dude. I got to work. I got a dog right now. I'm practicing with the dog until the kids come along. Um, so yeah, uh, thank you all for having me. It's uh, always cool to get asked to speak. Um, you know, so I certainly uh, am thankful to have this time here with you guys tonight. Uh, I guess I'll start off by giving a little bit of a story about myself above and beyond what Craig told you. You know, he's, he's right. I was born into a family of MLMers. You know, my, uh, my dad is, uh, Cheryl Cortese's brother. And so I grew up on a ranch in a small town north of Dallas. Uh, my father was uh, military. He was uh, with the Army uh, Special Forces, 12th Group, 82nd Airborne. So, you know, I grew up in a very uh, military family. And uh, in 82, the year I came around, uh, he started a shooting school. And so this was about the same time that um, – he was actually with my Aunt Cheryl, uh, with NSA, as it was called at the time. And so, you know, I grew up, I think, in a very entrepreneurial environment. Uh, everybody in my family, um, most everybody is associated at this point in time with the Juice Plus company, uh, has a business uh, and a position to one degree or another. Uh, but everybody in my family, whether they were with that business or another, uh, were all self-employed. And so I grew up in a very unconventional setting from that standpoint. Uh, my father always told me as a little kid, he said, son, I really don't care if you go to college or get a degree. It doesn't really make a difference to me. Uh, if you want to do that, I'll be happy and support that. And by support, I mean, I will pay for your books and you got to figure everything else out. <laughs> because I, I think that he really didn't see a lot of value uh, at that time in going and getting that conventional education. And that was, you know, 30 plus years ago that he was thinking like that. And it was interesting that, you know, at that point in time, he kind of saw the writing on the wall, uh, because certainly in the day and age we live in, I think all of us are aware at this point in time that the kids that are getting out of school today uh, really don't have an assured future, um, you know, like maybe your grandparents or your parents did when they went to school and they went to work for a company for 30, 40 years and they retired with that 
you know, conventional benefit package and retirement plan. Uh, that's all gone. So, you know, my journey in the Juice Plus company has been a short one thus far. I've been using the product. My aunt made sure we were all taking the Juice Plus product from the second that it came out. So I've been on that product now a, a long time. I guess it's been on market, you know, 26, 27 years, and I've kind of been swallowing it every day. And, uh, you know, the cool thing about the Juice Plus product, it's interesting in that, you know, you don't maybe know, necessarily notice things right out of the gate, but I've certainly noticed all the people that I went to high school with uh, and in college with. And if I look at myself right now, at next month I'll be 35 and, you know, the things that I'm doing and physically how I'm moving and, you know, the way my life and my body are, are moving forward. You know, I look at everybody else. This stuff definitely gives you an edge. You know, I shave and I've still got some girls that are way too young coming up and talking to me going, hey, how are you? So I think it's a Juice Plus products. It's got to be part of that, right? So, you know, it's cool in that um, when I started marketing this product, I took the long way around. You know, I did end up going to college. I went to school for finance. Uh, I did, in fact, not finish. Uh, once I realized that I was going to be working for myself in one capacity or another, school was out. I moved to California in 2005. Um, you know, in Dallas, I was doing some print work with an agency called Kim Dawson while I was in college. I was doing some JCPenney ads and stuff like that. And they sent me out on a TV commercial that I ended up getting, and that kind of turned me on to the world of the entertainment business. And before I knew it, I was off to California to pursue an acting career. And uh, in 2007, I got a big break, uh, landed a series regular role on a daytime show called General Hospital, which some of you may have seen. Uh, and I, I had some success as an actor. You know, I, I worked a lot, uh, made some really good money, and I worked enough in that business to know that even as cool as it was, there was some real downside to it in that I had to go to a job every day and trade my time for money which I was readily aware of, much more so than I think a lot of people are um, as they go through life because of the environment I'd been raised in. And it was cool when you were working, but when you weren't working, you weren't really making any money. And that was definitely a downside. So, you know, uh, after three or four years in that business, um, working on a lot of different shows, daytime, nighttime, doing all kinds of stuff, some really wonderful experiences. Uh, I, I went back to work with my father uh, with the shooting school and I took over marketing and recruitment and really grew that business, um, you know, uh, to, to a much higher place than it was in terms of revenue. And I had a lot of fun with that. And then again, I ran into that situation where uh, there was a real ceiling for me. Um, if I was on the phone working, uh, making calls, doing recruiting, you know, I was making good money. You know, I could do a, a, a recruit, bring, bring a new person in. You know, in my commission, I would make $700 or $1,000 in a phone call, which was great. But again, if I wasn't on the telephone, I wasn't making any money. And so, you know, I'm living out here in California, and probably the biggest fortune and blessing in my life is having the aunt that I have. Uh, she just so happened to move out to California to be with Edie, her daughter, um, and, and Edie's grandbaby. And she was like just a few miles away from me. And so, you know, I started to, to re-engage with her. And, you know, my aunt was always one of these really cool people, right? I love seeing my aunt as a little kid because anytime my aunt came, like Toys R Us was the trip and whatever we wanted, we got. You know, Aunt Cheryl was going to buy us whatever we wanted. And as a little kid, I didn't know anything other than I got the toys. But as I got older, I began to see where the money was coming from. And I became more and more aware of the lifestyle that she had. And so, you know, um, I think that began to become really attractive to me because as I began to really pay a lot closer attention to her, you know, I saw her time freedom. I saw her check every month that just, it got bigger and it got bigger and it got bigger. And it was getting bigger when she was just 100% full-time with Edie during Edie's pregnancy, helping raise Oliver for, through those first year or two. You know, my aunt was really hands-on there. And her check just kept getting bigger and kept getting bigger. Mm. And that really cued me into um, the fact that maybe I needed to revisit the family business, the other family business, uh, and really delve into what it meant to be a professional network marketer. 
Uh, I think Eric Worre, you know, has made that term pretty popular, professional network marketer. Um, you know, my aunt started this venture in a time where it really wasn't that popular, but if any of you know my aunt and know her story, uh, she was really in a tough place in life and she had to expand her perception on how income could be created. And she really didn't care what anybody else thought. It didn't matter whether or not it was popular. She had kids to take care of. Well, now we're in a world where this industry is, um, it's getting more and more popular. You know, I have friends uh, that have careers and on the side, they're with a company, this one or another one, you know, and they're with this company because the way they see it, they already love the product. Uh, they might as well tell other people about it and get paid. We see that same concept with Amazon. And the interesting thing is, and I think the thing we'll all see in another 15 to 20 years from now, is everybody's going to endorse a direct sales MLM business model because it is the most effective way to move products through the marketplace. It is a pure production based compensation plan where we get to, as a company, if I'm a company, I get to take people and use their word of mouth, use their communities to spread my products or to spread my service through the marketplace. And as a company, I am happy to pay them on their production versus the old conventional model, which is let's hire an advertising firm. Okay. I'm the advertising firm. I come in, I pitch you on how incredible my firm is, all of the content that we can provide, all of the things that we can do for you in the marketplace. I ask for a $250,000 check and I say, sit back and watch me go to work. Well, maybe it works, maybe it doesn't, but at the end of the day, it's fragmented. We really don't know. In this business model, as a company, I do know. Craig steps out and he markets 100 orders of Juice Plus. I pay Craig for his production. Joe steps out and markets 200 orders of Juice Plus. As a company, I'm happy to pay Joe for those 200 orders and so on and so forth. So, you know, it's a business model that I think is extremely efficient. It's a business model that guys like Eric Worre are really bringing light to. And it's something that I think we're just scratching the surface of in terms of what we're going to see in revenue for people who choose to take up this profession, because it is very much a profession, people who choose to really get skilled and become really good here, you're going to see those people make the kind of money in the next 10 years that other people might never make. It might take them 40, 50 years to make that same kind of money, because again, here we can leverage our time with other people's time. Here, we can let people do what they like to do. You don't want to sell? That's fine. Nobody wants to sell. The events are here to do the selling. You are not here to do the selling. You're here to do the inviting. So we've got a system here where everybody can play and do what they like to do. You want to teach? You want to educate? Go do it. This is a profession where teaching and education can pay you big, big, big money, much more so than the conventional teacher role, which interestingly enough, my aunt was a teacher before she became a professional network marketer. She was a teacher at a university and they paid her pennies. And she stepped in here to this business model and she did what she was already doing, which is teaching and education. And here she makes millions of dollars. So, you know, it's just a really interesting time to be in the world. You know, if we talk about technologies, if we look at technologies, um, my aunt's got people on her team that are in three or four years doing what took her 10 years to do because of technologies, because of how connected we are as a world. Um, you know, technologies are kind of a double-edged sword in that uh, they do connect all of us and some of us go about using those, those technologies the right way and some of us, you know, through trial and error learn a lot of times the wrong way and do some things that are really detrimental to our online relationships. Um, and so if people are gonna use technologies to grow their MLM business, I really encourage them to, to learn to do it the right way, whether it's, you know, go listen to some of the stuff that Eric Worre has to say, or if you are directly, you know, in uh, our, our upline, which I think most of you are, talk to Cheryl, talk to myself, talk to the people above you that are really using technologies effectively, um, because, you know, technologies, in my opinion, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, whatever you're going to use, that has to be used purely as a tool to educate. If you are using your, your technologies, your social medias to try to sell or do transactions, 
you're going to fall really short of the mark. Okay. Technology should be used to educate. They should be used to bring value, right? They should never be used to try to create transactions. So, you know, and I'm kind of jumping around all over here a little bit, but the point that I want to drive at is for myself, when I finally decided to do this and I, you know, have started now, I think I'm just coming up on like my three year mark. I uh, went to SSC in about a year, uh, hit sales coordinator in about two months, went to SSC in about a year. And then I got totally derailed in a relationship that came apart after six years and a shooting school that was just booming. You know, I really got sidetracked. And so I kind of lost some momentum there. Uh, now I'm trying to make that final push into Q. But one of the things that I learned along the way is that the interesting thing about this business is that if you do it right, if you really give it a couple of solid years, this business will follow you. It will kind of chase you. It'll be whispering in your ear, whether it's emails from Juice Plus saying, hey, we just sent out a customer order, or whether you're on the Cortese Group email list and you're getting emails saying, hey, come to this call, you know, come join us for this event. The cool thing about this business is it really does follow you even if you try to leave it. And I think that's important for people to understand because this is very much a journey. You know, I still feel like I'm so new here and I've got so much to learn. And, you know, if there's anything I can give all of us on the line tonight, if you want to be successful here, um, I heard somebody say this the other day, this was funny, but, you know, people were like, we don't need to reinvent the tire, right? The tire is working well for all vehicles, okay? If you want to spend your life trying to invent a better tire, a more round tire, a tire that works better on cars, so that your car can perform better. If you want to dedicate your life to that, go ahead and do it. But for me, I'm going to just use the tires that are already there. They're working pretty good. I think this business is the same way in that there are some skills here. Eric Worre really outlines them in his book, right, that work. Cheryl has a system that works. There's 460 or 70. I mean, I lose track of the numbers. They go so fast. National marketing directors in the United States and Canada. My aunt's organization has like almost 170 of them. So we're a fourth of company production. It's a brilliant system. The system works. I mean, Cheryl didn't train all those people herself, but she taught four or five or six or 10, 15 people the system, and then those people went and taught other people the system. And so the biggest mistake I see here too, and, and I, I don't want to make it seem like my business is all sunshine and rainbows because it isn't. I recruited a ton of people, and most of them, vanished okay and i blame that on myself because i really didn't know what i was doing i was great at recruiting but i wasn't great at nurturing and educating so one of the things that i've, I've learned here is that if i see a person come in and they're like hey just tell me what the system is and let me do it i tell them to go get grow pro they get it i tell them to jump on a monday night call they're on it i tell them to come to the thursday night zoom event every thursday night for 30 minutes even if they don't have people come build your belief build your education they're there. Those are the people that are going to be successful here. I've seen a lot of people come in and say, well, yeah, I know, but I, yo, man, I got my own vibe. I got my own style. I got my own swag. I, I hear all kinds of things. Whenever I hear that, I'm like, all right, go do you. Do you. Because chances are the marketplace is about to give you a big lesson. It's going to whip your butt. You're not going to have any success here. And when that time comes, we're going to find out what kind of humility and what kind of character you have. Are you going to look in the mirror and say, all right, everybody's got the same product line. Everybody's got the same comp plan. I got some people that are making a ton of money and I'm making none. It's my fault. Or are you going to sit there and say MLM doesn't work? This product doesn't work. This comp plan doesn't work and walk. Guys, I've had a lot of people that have walked and that's okay because I've had a few that have chosen to stay. I've had some that have taken the long way around. They went out and they tried their own thing and it didn't work and they came back and they said, let me plug myself into the system. And then I've had some that just automatically came in like myself. I will pat myself on the back for this because when I started three years ago, I said, Aunt Cheryl, what do I do? She said, it's very simple. Your responsibility is to bring people. My responsibility is to bring presentation. You bring the people, I'll bring the presentation. We're going to get you a check. And that's what I did. I said, you know what? All I got to do is put butts in seats. I can put butts in seats. I'll either talk them into it or I'll drag them over there, but I'm going to put butts in seats for Cheryl Cortese and I'm going to let her work her magic. If people, when they come into this business, have that simplistic mindset 
of I am here to put butts in seats. I'm not going to try to teach the comp plan. I'm not going to try to educate people on the product. I'm not going to try to answer questions I don't know the answers to. I'm just going to put butts in seats and let my upline provide presentation. Then you do really well. I did well. I mean, I did well in a relatively short period of time. And granted, I had the best in the business backing me with a hell of a skill set and incredible story. But, you know, I see too many people that run off and try to do their own thing instead of just plugging into a very simple, uh, very duplicatable system. Um, you know, I've been blessed um, along with growing up with my Aunt Cheryl. You know, I spent a lot of time around Jeff Roberti. Jeff Roberti came out to our school. He shot with us. You know, I can remember being 18 years old, running around my first conference with Jeff. Jeff was, you know, I don't know. Jeff was probably like in his late 30s, early 40s or whatever he was. And, and you know, the guy was the king. He was the king. He looked like a movie star when he would walk through the hotel. He was followed like a movie star. And, you know, I remember Jeff telling me, he said, hey, man, he said, here you can make money or you make excuses, but you can't do both. I'm sure we've all heard Jeff or Bertie say that, right? We can make some money or we can make some excuses, but we can't do both. This business is a huge, huge business that attracts people who want to make excuses. Okay. So as we all begin to grow our business, we have to remember, you don't go out and find people and put them in this business and make them good. We go out and we find good people and we put them in the business and they're already good. I have spent too much time trying to take people that I saw tremendous potential in. I mean, I'm looking at these men, these women, these kids, and I'm saying, you guys, you have everything. You're good looking. You're intelligent. You, you've got a, a, a white collar career. You have credibility. I've got doctors that are incredible, intelligent people, but they have refused to endorse things that are very simple to do. And they're not going as fast as they could be going. I've got other people who don't have half the talent, but they just showed up and they said, what do I need to do? Tell me what to do. And they do it. And they're having incredible success. So what I've learned is I've got to let people do what they want to do. I, I let them do what they want to do now. A after three years, my life has gotten a lot easier. My stress level has gone way down. I look at the PVC report. I see who's doing what. I look at the events. I see who's on them. I look at people who are talking to me. I can tell if you've read GoPro. Don't tell me you've read the book and try to talk to me about it. I know if you read it or not. I know who's doing the simple things that are going to make themselves successful. And I can tell which category you fall into. And if you fall into the category where the way I like to look at it is maybe the timing in your life, it just isn't right yet. Maybe you're not desperate enough yet. You know, we all do things in this business coming from one of two places, either a benevolent, I want to help society and cure the world, or, yo, I can't put gas in the car. The house is about to be foreclosed on. The latter is a better motivation. Okay, if you give me somebody who's broke, you give me somebody who's hungry, you give me somebody who shows up and said, I'm here to learn, I want a better life, that's, that's what I want to see. I don't care if they got any money. I love Jim Rohn, man. I grew up listening to that guy as a kid in the car. My mom would have those tapes playing over and over. I can quote that guy from, you know, sun up to sun down. I love the dude. You know, he said, the wonderful thing about this deal is you can sell it before you buy it. If you think you need money, then you don't understand. You really don't. You can sell this deal before you've got any money. You don't have to have money to be successful here. I love when I run into people that say, look, I love it. It makes sense. I want it. But I just don't have the money. I say, that's great. All I need for you to have is the want and the understanding. Do you have that? And if they say, yeah, I say, great. Then let's just go find three people that want this stuff also. Let's get them some product order and let's get your product order free. And you know what? That's when it's, I'm not going to use that saying, that's a Texas saying. That's when you find out who you've really got in front of you. If that person looks you in the eye and says, wonderful, I didn't know we could do that, I'm in. I'm going to have you three people tomorrow. That's a racehorse you better pay attention to. 
if that person kind of stumbles and bumbles around and said, well, I don't know, I don't really know. I mean, like I haven't used the product yet, so I don't know if I can really go talk to other people about the product. Like, I, I don't know, like, uh, that's, that, that person's just not right. And here's the thing that, that I think all of us need to understand. At this point, I got to like, you know, when you log on to your back office and you start looking through all the people that you signed up as distributors and you're scrolling through the pages of people that you signed up as distributors and you realize that all those people are like, they're gone. You don't know what happened to them. And you got a few that are still there. Well, I've got some of those people that are now coming back. And so here's what I've realized. Overall, the most important thing in this business, we've got to maintain the relationship. If somebody doesn't do what you ask them to do, if somebody just doesn't get it, if somebody tells you an idiot, you have to have enough character within yourself to smile, give them a hug, and say, I want the best for you. I want the best for you in your life, and I'm here to serve you in any way I can. Because life may come along and kick that person in the butt, and that person comes back to you and they say, look, I just, I don't think it was the right time for me, but you've always been there for me. You've always supported me. And I want back in this thing. I got people that are coming back and doing that now. They went away in the beginning. Now they're coming back. They wouldn't come back if we didn't maintain the relationship. So I think it's really important for all of us to, to have enough internal fortitude to swallow our pride, swallow our ego, swallow our emotions. And when we get upset with people, you, you have to take the high road. You know, that's one of the things that I've seen my aunt do over and over again with people is she always takes the high road. She never loses her cool. She's always relaxed. She's always here to serve that person. And, and it's not an act. That's not fake. I mean, if any of you know my aunt, there is nobody that is more giving and more caring and more loving in this world than Cheryl Cortese. She is one of the most wonderful, incredible human beings that has probably ever walked the face of this planet. And she just happens to be my aunt. I'm not saying that because she's my aunt. I'm saying that because it's a fact. You go into a Juice Plus conference and there are 8,000 people there and I guarantee you 90% of them know who Cheryl Cortese is and 80% of them have had that woman in some way, shape or form come along and touch their lives. Their lives have changed. You know, one of the other things that really drove me to this business, I became very aware of the fact that um, there are different levels of business in the marketplace today. There, there are basically three right? If we look at a level one business, let's use McDonald's as an example. Extremely profitable, but robs our society. It robs it of its health. Makes a lot of money, but does not benefit our society or our community. There's a level two business. Level two business might be like a hotel, right? Hotel provides a necessary evil. Everybody's got to have a place to stay when they travel. It employs people, but does it really build our society or build the community other than the jobs it supplies? Not really. Then there's a level three business, which is a business that builds the fabric of our society. It builds a community. It brings value. It improves the quality of everybody's lives. And as a result of the value that it brings, it profits tremendously financially. I made a decision long ago that anything I did in life, I wanted to be a part of that level three income. My shooting school, when we bring a person through the door, when they leave, they're a better human being. They're more confident. They've got peace of mind. We send them out the doors a better human being. This Juice Plus business, I knew immediately it's a level three business. When I bring a person in here, whether they're a customer and we provide them with better health or whether we give them a way to put to rest their financial fears, we are building a better human being. That's what we should all strive for. So, you know, we've got a, a really unique opportunity here. Um, I think we're going to see some crazy things in this industry, certainly within this company. And I think we just about touched the billion dollar mark last year as a company in terms of sales, like in 26, 27 countries to do almost a billion dollars in sales and something that averages maybe a 90 to a hundred dollar price point. Guys, that's insane. We've got a 3% market share worldwide. I go talk to 10 people out here in LA about Juice Plus. I'm lucky if three people know about it. For me, I'm like a pig in you know what, if any of us have heard that saying. That's basically what I am. Because every person I go talk to, I see opportunity. I see tremendous opportunity for growth. I see tremendous opportunity for us to all be a part of something very, 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 very special. For us to build a kit, to build a business for our kids, kids, kids. 
That's what Cheryl's done. She's built a business that will be around for Edie. It'll be around for Oliver. It'll be around for probably the next generation after that. She could go away tomorrow. That thing's just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. We all have the opportunity to do that. It's basically, and here's the ugly truth, it's how many people do you want to go out and, and, and get told no? How many people are you willing to let make fun of you? Personally, I got like a two-second rebound rate. I have some people say some crazy things to me on social media. I don't care. I don't care. I'm 34 years old and I don't have an alarm clock. I'm 34 years old and I don't go to a job. I'm 34 years old and if I want to get on my motorcycle and go ride three days a week out in the canyons of California, I go do it. I walk my dog at the canyon every morning. I work out like three times a day because I love to CrossFit and Olympic lift. I don't know a lot of other 34-year-olds that do that. So if you want to make fun of me, go ahead. I'm going to laugh all the way into my latter years because I was willing to take the laughing and the nose and the discouragement and all of that. So I'd encourage all of you to develop the mindset that lets you love it. Love that stuff because that's the stuff that's going to make you into the person that you need to become to be successful here. We all get forged in fire here. How much heat can you take? You don't become a millionaire in this business without taking some serious heat, some serious rejecting. Like uh, I think Eric Worre said, he's like, the, the, the truth of the situation is what nobody wants to tell you is that you have to be willing to accept a temporary loss of esteem in your personal circle. Like I had somebody comment on my IG the other day, um, you know, telling me I needed to get a real career and a real job and like get a life. And I was like, all right, that's cool. I get it. Like you don't, you don't understand it. But if you want to sit down with me and we'll compare bank accounts and we'll talk about lifestyle and we'll talk about business, I, I'm down to do that anytime you want. Build the belief inside yourself that is a, a rock solid foundation. You want to know how to build belief? Keep showing up at your events, guys. Show up at your events like they're church. I don't know if it, how many of you go to church, but Everybody knows why you go to church. You go to church every Sunday so you can be reminded of what you believe in so that the crazies out there don't get you. Our Juice Plus events are church. We got to go to church all the time. I'm in church twice a week. I got a Monday night call. I'm on with Cheryl. I got a Thursday night Zoom event. I run every week. We're getting ready to launch some more. I'm a part of as many of these events as I can so that I can remember. I can be reminded because even me, I have my bad days. My down days where I'll bring people in and I think they're incredible. I think they're going to be just dynamite. They vanish. I don't know what happened to them. They're gone. Okay. And I got to pick myself up, dust myself off, and I got to go do it again. So, you know, that's, that's the ups, the downs. Um, you know, Craig, I'm right at like 40 minutes here, I think. You want to, uh, like, turn it, uh, turn it back over to you? What, what you want to do, man? Yeah, no, I think that sounds great, man. That was awesome. I love your enthusiasm and just the passion that you bring to this business at such a young age is, is impressive. And I think you set a good example for a lot of people your age and younger of uh, what's possible. You know, so thank you for that. I really appreciate it. Um, one of the things that we always ask our speakers is if you could label three things that you do every day that have helped you create a successful juice plus business what would those three things be what are the non-negotiables for you um well i i think i think number one first and foremost is uh i think you have to become obsessed with the details in this business and when i say that i mean you have to become obsessed with all of the little idiosyncrasies that make people successful. My aunt told me a story when she was first getting started with Jeff. Jeff would do presentation and they video recorded it at that time. And my aunt, when she started for like six, seven months, she'd watch that video every night. And she got to the point where she could literally duplicate verbatim, even with the hand gestures, what Jeff or Bertie did because she, she knew she didn't have the time, right? She had to make money right now. She didn't know if her way would work, but she knew what Jeff or Bertie was doing was working. So she became obsessed with those details, those little idiosyncrasies, the hand signals, the gestures, the voice inflection. You heard Eric Worre talk about it too. He recorded himself. He played it back. He said, that sounds like garbage. I got to do better. How many of us on the line tonight have recorded ourselves doing presentation and listened to it? 
So I think that's number one. You really have to have a, my aunt says you got to have three things, right? You got to have strong desire. You got to be willing to go to work and you got to be coachable. I think all of that, all of those three go under that banner of being obsessed with the details of success. So I think that's number one. Uh, number two is, and I'm, I'm, you know, just because my background, where I come from, you know, when we teach people how to shoot. There are a lot of people that come in that can stand there and pick up a gun and shoot a paper target, you know, 10 yards away and do it all day long. But if your life's on the line and your heart rate is accelerating at 250 beats per minute and now you can't see anything because you have tunnel vision, you can't hear it because you've got auditory exclusion, can you perform with that tool under that scenario? I think all of us have to become so well trained that we are bulletproof in all the aspects of our business. We're bulletproof when it comes to recruiting. If I got to give a presentation in a restaurant and I got 30 seconds, I can do it. If I've got 20 minutes, I can give a presentation. If I need to do the comp plan, I know the comp plan forwards and backwards. I listen to my aunt do it over and over and over and over again because I knew if you're going to get somebody excited about this business, you got to be able to show them the money. So I think training, being very, very skilled is number two. You know, it starts with that desire. That's one. Being skilled is number two. And I think number three is it's real hard to, uh, to look good and get better at the same time. Okay. We all have to be willing to go out there and look like crap. Like when you're new and you're getting started here, yo, I got news for you. There are going to be a lot of people that are going to laugh at you and walk off because you're not going to be very good. Okay. My aunt said she did a presentation one time and she was so nervous. She threw up before the presentation and the presentation was so bad. She never heard from any of those people again. There were like 40 of them. Right. And it's hard to imagine her. If you've seen her lately with as polished and professional as she is being that bad. But it's like Jim Rohn said, you know, you get the new person up, they, they're hugging the, the stand. They won't let go of the stand. They want to hide behind it as they talk. Six months later, they're walking all over the stage. You can't get them to shut up. You have to get to that place where you're just so comfortable because you've been willing to go through that failure. That's where success comes from. So you really have to be willing to burn through your warm market. When you get started in this business, who are you going to talk to? The irony is that you're going to talk to the toughest group of people out there. Your friends, family, and neighbors that all know you, they all look at you as Josh the shooting guy or Josh the actor or whatever. They don't look at me as Josh the nutritional expert. They don't look at me as Josh the MLM expert. That's where we all learn. We learn with the hardest group of people out there. So you got to be willing to take your punishment right out of the gate and love it. Like you got to learn to love it. Those people that are brother, sister, fam, mom, dad, friend, all those people are going to laugh at you. And I hope that you relish it. I hope that you become so good at presenting to those people that are laughing in your face. All of a sudden, when you walk out to a stranger on the street, that person doesn't realize they've just run into a killer. You're an assassin. They don't have any clue what's hit them because you have already gone through the disappointment. You've already gone through the discouragement. And now you're talking to some person on the street. You don't know them from Adam. You don't care. And you, the crazy thing about it, the stranger on the street is the best person to go talk to. I hear people all the time say, well, I burned through my warm market. Awesome. I'm so stoked you did that. Now you can really build a business. Now you can go out and talk to some people that don't know you from Adam and are going to actually listen to you because as rational, logical human beings, who would we listen to people we know or people we don't know? Well, of course, people we don't know because we're rational, logical human beings. So those are really the three things, Greg. You've got to, you've got to be obsessed with success. You've got to really have a strong desire. You've got to become very, very skilled. I listen to GoPro just about every day in my truck as I drive around and I can quote most of it. I've read the book multiple times. I'm obsessed with the details of success. I work on being as skilled as I can every day. And I love, love, love going through those people to laugh at me because I know I'm going to have the last laugh. You know, if I hadn't seen my aunt done it, I don't know if I'd have the kind of belief that I've got, but I've seen her do it. I saw Jeff do it. Dude makes like a half a million, five, 600,000 stupid, like Pablo Escobar money every month and has for years. And my aunt does the same thing. And if I only ever make a quarter of that, 
If we only ever made twenty-five dollars or $50,000 a month, you realize you'd be doing that with no overhead, no employees, shipping no product, collecting no money, no risk. That's the kind of opportunity we've got. So, you know, even if we never touch Cheryl Cortese or Jeff or Bernie money, Adam Westwick money, you know, Cheryl Drove, some of these people are knocking down big, big money. Even if you only made 10, 15 grand a month, guys, the lifestyle that this business creates is retarded. You go do whatever you want to do every day. You want to be professional yoga, go class girl, go do it. Like go do whatever you want. I don't care what you want to do, go do it. I think that life needs variety. This business allows you to go do whatever you want to do in life, anytime you want to do it, wherever you want to do it in the world. I may not always live in America. I don't know. I might want to check out somewhere else. I'm going to take the business with me. I'm going to plug in my iPhone right here. I'm going to make sure I got a Wi-Fi signal. I'm going to go talk to my team. So, you know, that, that's kind of the way I feel about it, dude. Oh, that was awesome, man. Again, thanks for all the enthusiasm and passion that you bring to this. You know, it's, it's, it's really refreshing and, one of the things I've talked to a lot of people about lately is, you know, I don't, I don't care how good you are at anything else you've ever done in your life. You come into this business, you got to take your punches, you got to fail, you got to learn, you got to grow from it. And the best people in this industry had no idea what they were doing when they got into it. So um, I really love that. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was awesome. Thanks for um, having me. Yeah, for sure. Uh, for those of you that are here, um, please, if you like what you heard, if you're intrigued at all by this business that is amazing and just giving, um, please contact the person that invited you here and sit with them and, and learn some more about this amazing opportunity that we have in front of us to uh, have time, freedom, and, and live an incredible lifestyle. I uh, also wanted to mention uh, next month in August, we have Greg Lockridge. Um, who's really big into tower gardens. He's down in Arizona. He's on the call tonight. Actually, Greg, thanks for being here. He's going to an NMD um, with the Juice Plus company. He'll be our speaker next month. And then in September, uh, we're going to have Sean Myers uh, speaking for us as well. So we've got a couple of amazing calls coming up. Again, if you want a recording, uh, shoot me a message, craigpkennedy at gmail.com. Or if you have my phone number or Facebook, friend me on Facebook. I'd love to, uh, to meet you if I don't know you. And um, yeah, Craig, everybody. Real quick, sorry to interrupt you, but I would like a recording. And uh, also, if anybody would like to attend uh, the event that's going to happen at 7:30, which is PST, um, guys, I co-host an event with a couple of medical professionals out here. It is a different style from this. It's very short. It's 30 minutes. Uh, Craig's attended. You're all welcome to attend. Uh, bring your prospects. Uh, we do a brief, very brief. Uh, introduction. I go right to a guest speaker. We have a new guest speaker every Thursday night. Uh, tonight, it's a woman named Nicole, uh, mother, wife. Uh, she's got a really cool story, sales coordinator. Uh, we do a little bit of uh, company product history. Uh, we talk a little bit about business very briefly in terms of some income of some of the other people, and we're done right at 8 o'clock sharp. Uh, so anybody's welcome to attend that. Um, it's the same kind of deal here, Zoom. Uh, it's just a much different format. Awesome. Thanks. If you want to just pop that into the comments real quick, if so people can see the call in the zoom number, uh, that uh, might be helpful. If you I have it. Just, um, I enter that on, uh, let's see here. Uh, what do I do? Mute? Per, no participants. No. Tell me how to do that. Craig. Let me just find your email real quick. Oh yeah. That might be a better way to do it. I'll find your email and I'll it's pop same, it up right here. Craig. Same passcode, ID, all that kind of stuff. The same number I gave you last time. Yep, yep. I'm almost there. Chat. There's chat. Here is the Zoom number to call in for everybody. And just go to your Zoom and enter that number. I listened to it a couple weeks ago. I love the doctor you have at the end that's there to answer any questions, you know, uh, he did some great information about the Omega product last time I listened. So, uh, yeah, all right. A um, couple of chiros on there tonight, uh, vascular surgeon. Uh, I, through my shooting school, have a net, kind of a network of doctors, and so a lot of my business is doctors. But uh, it's just great because it offers a lot of validation uh, that anybody can use. You know, if you come on that event, we've got doctors talking. You guys can all use that validation. Those people don't even have to be in your business uh, to use that validation. That's one of the other things I love about this business it is truly a people helping people business. We're all here to uh, help each other do well. And, uh, you know, we don't do well unless we help a lot of other people do well. 
So I'm a big believer in karma. If there's anything that I can personally do for you guys uh, or, or facilitate in terms of an event, you know, please let me know. I appreciate it. And thanks again, Josh. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Uh, Josh, I will see you. And it's my wife, Andy, over here, Andy Kennedy. Um, we'll see you at Q School. Looking forward to it. Okay, cool, guys. Nice being both of you. See you later. Good night, night everybody.